Hello, and welcome to the Wade Borth Podcast. I'm your host, Wade Borth. And in every episode, my goal is to get you to think differently about how money works and ultimately to empower you to take control of your money and your personal financing system. So I got a letter about a week ago from Wells Fargo, and I've always kept an account at Wells Fargo just because I like to see what's going on there. And it's just one of those things that it's interesting to have. But I have an account at Wells Fargo, and I know I pick on Wells Fargo a bunch, but uh, a lot of times it's because they're an easy target. They do a lot of foolish things from a bank standpoint. But uh, I got a letter saying that the, the line of credit that they had offered me and everybody else from when you do some reading, what you find out is those things are anywhere between three and a hundred thousand dollar lines of credit are being suspended in September, suspended, canceled in September to where you'll no longer have this line of credit. So I got this and it really made me think and it made me step back. I, I have a couple points to be made there. The first one was it brought me back to 2008. And I don't, you may or may not recall, I tell the story about in 2008, we had a line of credit and we were going to use it to do a home improvement project. Talked to a contractor on Wednesday and on, on Monday, we get a letter in the mail that our line of credit had been pulled and we we're going to use the home improvement part was through our line of credit. And at that time, that's when I decided never to rely solely on a bank for a line of credit or rely on a bank for anything as far as that goes. And that really led me down the path wholeheartedly of this idea of become, becoming your own banker. So that's one thing. I, it took me back to that day and kind of reinforced this idea of what I'm doing is correct. What I'm teaching agents, what I'm teaching my clients makes a whole lot of sense because banks can change the rules anytime they want. And if you want to play by the rules, then quite frankly, we should never bitch or complain if they change the rules. Because again, it's their ball court. It's their all their equipment. It's their field. And if we want to play there and they change the rules, well, they have the right to do it. So if that's where you're going, if that's your only source of capital, then shame on you. Let's find a different way to make that happen for for you. So anyhow, I found it rather interesting that they send this letter out. And it made me think of a conversation I was having with another agent where she was telling me that her somebody else in her office, another agent in her office said it was crazy. They'd never pull lines of credit. So that never happened back in 2008 where they pulled everybody's line of credit. And it's just not true. They did. And here I see they're doing it again. Now they're not doing it, you know, just with no warning, no notice. They're giving people warning and notice to do it. And so it's a little bit different in that sense. But the fact of the matter is that when you start doing some research, start doing some reading, they, they've gotten away from home equity lines of credit. They don't do auto loans. There's a lot of things they're not doing, and it should just you should ask why. So let's talk a little bit about how banks make money. So a bank will pay, let's say that they'll pay one uh, dollar uh, for the use of a hundred dollar bill. Then they turn around and they lend that money back out to somebody. Now these lines of credit were anywhere between seven and I think twenty one percent, depending on your. FICO score and all the other stuff you can have. But anyhow, the, the point being is that let's just use 10% for an easy number, right? So they pay 1%, which they're not paying 1%, by the way. They're paying something less than that for savings. But they pay 1% for the use of a $100 bill. But they can turn around and charge 10% for the use of that $100 bill. You know? So you think about it. That's a 1,000% markup. That's a huge markup. On, on their money, right? $1 and then up to 100% or up to $100 that they're getting back for the use of that money. Excuse me. They're, again, they're charging 10% for that $100 bill. So they're getting $10 back. But the point is that's how banks make money. And now they're suspending or canceling this line of credit. So if you think about it, this is, Fundamentally, the way banks make money, they borrow it at a cheaper rate and they turn around and again, they're not lending their money out. They're lending your money out, the person who deposited the dollars into the bank to somebody that needs to borrow it. So they're taking your money, lending it to somebody else and they're charging a markup on that. Pretty good little system. But now they're, they're stepping away from doing what is one of their most profitable lines. I was reading uh, one of the articles I was reading. It says... Literally in there, it was saying this, we find this rather strange because this is, is it's quoting here in this article, it says the move is strange given the banks, the, the banking industries need to boost loan growth. So they want to boost loan growth, but yet they're suspending these lines of credit. 
I can't say I know why they're suspending lines of credit. There's a lot of theory out there. One is they got caught for doing some real uh, shady things. And the Federal Reserve is requiring that they, they clean up their books. And so this is one way they can clean up their books is by eliminating some of those lines of credit. I don't see that. It doesn't make any sense to me. These are easy. They're profitable. There's no no underwriting. There's no collateral that's, that's real profitable. So you know, I, I guess I don't see that as being a real problem. I think some of the things that they see coming maybe is that if if people aren't going back to work, they can't work, the economy isn't nearly as strong as they're they're trying to get us to believe that these lines of credit will be accessed and never get paid. I think that's probably one of the bigger issues. They're afraid of what's going to be coming in the future in the sense that people aren't going to be able to pay these lines of credit. And so they're proactively pulling those things from a profitability standpoint. Now, I can appreciate that from the bank. If they don't think they're going to be able to make any money on this and they they see this as, as losing money, they're just doing what they need to do to protect the bank. But again, knowing how banks make money is by lending money out, and then you're starting to pull that back. Is there a fear running through Wells Fargo? Second one is, and, and I had a debate with somebody the other day about this, yesterday actually, that they see inflation running rampant. So you're going to ask yourself, well, why is inflation an issue? Right? Why is inflation an issue on a line of credit? If you think about it, if I have a $50,000 line of credit and I borrowed it all out today. And I said, okay, I'm going to make that, I'll pay that back over the next five or 10 years or 20 years, whatever it might be. And there's no controls because it's a non-structured payback. And inflation takes off. Now the dollar that I'm paying back five years from now isn't nearly as much of a dollar as I'm paying today. So again, this goes back to the inflation idea that the most valuable dollar we have is today's dollar, right? And with inflation, if it becomes a much bigger issue, that dollar becomes deflated each and every day or each and every year. So would I rather have a certainty knowing that line of credit is either A, not going to be used, so I don't have to worry about deflationary issues, or B, I don't want somebody to take a full line of credit out today and, and wait you know, 10 years before they pay it back. I'd rather know for sure that we're going to close that line of credit and then have the client pay it back over a three-year or five-year period. That way there's some certainty versus the uncertainty that the bank is facing. If you think about it, that's what we teach our clients. That's what we teach our agents to show to, to their clients as well, is that are you looking for more certainty or looking for less certainty? Everybody wants more certainty. There's no doubt about it. And banks are that way too. They want to know for sure what that payment stream is going to look like. So again, I just, I found it rather interesting. A, they do this. They change the rules as they see fit. And so the question is, do you want to be the one um, working in that environment? Do you want to be the one participating in that environment of having a bank loan and being subject um, to the bank's rules and whims and desires? Or would you rather take control of the banking function in your own life, having this long-term objective saying that ultimately, I want to take myself from being obligated to the bank to taking control of the banking function down the road. And you might still use the bank along the way, but it's it's just as a secondary option. But having only one choice is, is, is not having options. Having only one place to go get money isn't an option. So think about this. If you could start growing your assets, your dollars, um, in applying the banking function in your life, taking control of the banking function in your life, are you not going to be much better off? Because then who's making the rules? You're making the rules. You're not having to follow what Wells Fargo dictates. You're not having to have, make plans and use of this money to grow your business, to buy real estate, do whatever you want to do, whatever it is that you see as growing wealth, and then have you know, Wells Fargo, whoever else you're borrowing the money from, change the rules in midstream. Well, there's an old adage when I was growing up, he said, you can't change horses in midstream. Seems like the banks do that and the big businesses do that all the time. They'll change your horse on you in midstream without you having any input. The one thing in the letter that was, it was rather interesting, they were very clear that this decision is final. There's no debating it. There's no going back and asking for a change to it. This decision is final. And with that that letter was just eye-opening again, reinforcing the fact that if you're not taking control of the banking function in your life, you're letting somebody else dictate to you what the rules are. You're letting somebody else dictate to you 
when and where the rules can be changed. Not much different than having a contract with the government. The government's big enough it can change whenever it wants to change. It'll change the rules on 401ks or taxation or whatever it wants to change. And when you abdicate your control, your ability to control what's going on, then you're going to get really what you deserve. And that's usually not real pretty because, again, you put your faith and you relied on an entity. You relied on somebody else to take control of that function in your life. You know, Nelson Nash wrote the book, Becoming Your Own Banker. He didn't write Wells Fargo being your banker, or Wade Borth being your banker. It's you becoming your own banker. The whole idea is to empower you to take control of that banking function in your life. So when you want to expand your business or you want to buy a piece of rental property or you want to start a, a Amazon store or whatever it might be, that's the way you see you want to grow wealth. That's your vision. That's what you want to do. Then go for it. All you need is active capital to make that happen. So the question is, what are you doing to build that capital? What are you doing to apply the banking function in your life? And what are you doing to take control of it? If you want to learn more, want to talk about it more, love to have this conversation. Love to talk about, again, banking principles, not the modern day bank process because everybody said, well, I can't, I'm not a bank. Yeah, but there's banking principles that you can apply in your life. There's banking functions that you can apply in your life. You don't need to be a $100 billion bank in order to be successful in, in, in your family banking system. You can build that on your own. You can apply all the same principles as Wells Fargo does.